Hello there, Sagittarius. Welcome to your reading. So, um, this is going to be a very spiritual, magical month that is in store for you. And the reason why I say that is uh, when I was meditating on this reading for you, I focused on, you know, what does the Sagittarius person need to know as we navigate the month of March? And um, I saw something and then I heard something. So let me just relay the, the messages to you and then we'll shuffle out the cards, okay? So the first thing is, I see this little boy. He's probably like five or six. He's in bed and he's kind of scared. You know how children kind of get scared when they have to start sleeping on their own, in their own room, in their own bed? And they're afraid of the shadows that kind of dance on their ceilings at night, okay? It could be from the trees outside, it could just be, you know, from the leaves, from the branches, but there's like shadows dancing around in his uh, bedroom um, ceiling at night. So he's kind of under the covers, his covers are pulled up all the way to his chin, and he's just looking and he's not able to sleep, okay? Then the, um, the, the window kind of slowly creaks open it seems kind of creepy so that makes him feel even more scared but then what I see is this uh, this it looks like a fairy or like an angel it's holding a harp and it's it's see-through it's it's uh, in, invisible so it's not like he can see her but she's holding a harp she's very small she hovers over his um, ceiling she plays the harp and then there's just like magical fairy dust that comes out it, it, it lands on him it makes him sleepy and then he falls into sleep he gets a really good night's sleep when in the morning time she disappears everything is all bright again and he feels well rested he feels like he's got a good night's sleep he's no longer afraid of whatever it was that he was afraid of the night before he's no longer afraid and uh, as a result of that he feels like he's ready to face the day okay and then uh, when I was shuffling I heard a message and um, I feel like this is particular for especially people who have children that's what it feels like to me but it could apply in other areas of your life the sentence or the phrase that I was hearing is all things returning to its source okay things returning to its source so for those of you who have children i feel like you know there's going to be um them coming back in okay so like possibly a, a family reunion possibly even a situation where if you have been estranged from family members there's going to be a um coming back together okay and then I also feel like if you have been um, missing things, misplacing things, I'm hearing now misplaced priorities will be recognized for what they are. If you've been misplacing things, if you feel like things were stolen from you or taken from you or things that rightfully belong to you are no, for whatever reason, are not around you, then I feel like, you know, things are going to be coming back to you. So all things returning to its source. So those two messages to me um, indicate a very, very strong sense of uh, divine protection, okay? You have something hovering your environment, hovering around your environment, and I feel like it's clearing up a lot of worries and anxieties for you. It's making the situation better, so you have a little bit of uh, guidance and help behind the scenes um, to alleviate situations for you. And at the same time, I feel like, you know, that message that I hear, it is coming through from your spirit guide. And especially a very strong family or ancestral spirit telling you that, and this this can be, a, you know, a little bit of a controversial sentence, but it, it doesn't really matter because we all originate from the source, okay? Like we all originates from the original man or the original woman. So when it says that, you know, all things will come back to its source, I almost feel like this ancestral sense of protection, people wanting to take care or protect their descendants, as well as preserving the bloodline. There is a reason why you are here on this planet, okay? You have a, a purpose. It might not have been reached yet. And so you have divine protection to help you reach that 
purpose, to help you develop your true capabilities, to live up to your true potential. And that is why you're still here. And that is especially why you have um, people working behind the scenes, you know, moving things along, clearing up obstacles and blockages and fears and self-doubt to be able to get you where you need to go. So I feel like the energy is very, very powerful. And it's telling you, Sagittarius, you're not just an ordinary person. You're not just, you know, one of the animals in the, the feed line, okay? You're, you're not that. You have a special destiny. And many of you have possibly been denying yourself of your destiny because you were scared because it required a lot of you because you are dealing with self-doubt and i feel like you're getting a spiritual message here from your spirit guides telling you that you are close to your destiny you know what it is for many of you and uh, you might be even in a way i feel telling yourself, steering yourself in a different path because you feel like, no, I would never be able to accomplish that. I will never be able to achieve that. I will never be able to, you know, manifest that type of a reality for me. And so they're telling you that you have a divine purpose. It needs to be recognized. It needs to be accepted. And we're helping you behind the scenes. So don't you worry, child. Okay. So let me talk about this because this really struck me. So these are the two cards that came out, right? And um, this is the sleepless night. The the child in bed, really worried, really afraid. Shadows dancing through his um, his bedroom walls, okay, or his ceiling. You're going to be seeing a lot of uh, spiritual signals and signs, uh, synchronicities, okay? And I feel like you're going to start to see lights flickering. You're going to start to see, you know, windows or doors uh, opening very unexpectedly. You're going to feel like, so you're, you're just going to go through the motions of your everyday life, right? And then you're going to feel your attention like automatically diverted towards a specific direction or a specific person or a specific situation, so, so circumstance. And you're not gonna want, you're not gonna know why. Like, why was I looking straight and then compelled to, you know, turn around? Why was I looking at this and then in the end, like looking? If you're at the grocery store, for example, you're eyeing this and you're just like, oh, I'm gonna throw that in my shopping cart. And then all of a sudden, you feel yourself picking up something else and throwing that in your shopping cart. You're divinely guided, okay? Your guys are trying to communicate with you. So I feel like there, this is a very magical, mysterious. And a very profound month where you are heeding your guidance you're heeding your higher um, in it's like intuitive hits from your spiritual guides or it's learning to pay attention to the signs and learning to read the signs that's what it feels like to me um, I'm seeing some people possibly even learning a new language okay and I feel like if you have uh, hit some obstacles when it comes to learning something, in particular a new language, you're going to start to dream in that language. You're going to start to um, like understand the mechanics of it, understand not only the, the language, the, the syntax, the, the grammar, the spelling, the uh, pronunciation or the enunciation or, you know, the the um, intonation of that language, but I feel like you're going to be immersed in some type of a cultural experience, like a complete immersion experience that allows you to understand something from the inside out. And I feel like it's your spirit guides um, transforming your, the way you look at a situation in order for you to overcome these obstacles, okay? And then I'm also feeling for many of you, if you've hit like a brick wall, like why am I not getting this? Why am I not understanding this? Um, in some type of a endeavor, okay? You, you feel like you've been working at it, okay? You've been working really, really long and hard. You might have been overworked very heavily, you know, since October of last year. There were a lot of blessings that came through since October, 2018. But I also feel like there were a lot of things that you needed to take care of. It seems like one after the other, putting out this fire and then something else uh, creeps up and then you have to put out uh, that fire. And then I also feel like uh, there were a lot of tiny little financial expenditures that you had to take care of. 
uh, each one of them alone don't really break the bank, but one after the other, it can feel very emotionally, um, I'm seeing like hard to breathe, okay? Because you didn't plan for these expenses and I feel like they really caught up to you. And like I said, they're, they're minor little, you know, financial expenditures, but all together, one after the other, it can feel like, when is this going to end? And it can feel like, you know, you're, you're uh, fighting a losing battle, but nonetheless, you, you stuck it out, you hung in there. And I feel as a result of it, you're coming out on top, okay? You never gave up. You never turn away and, you know, run off because you were scared. You stuck it out and you maintain, you know, your, your victory as a result of it. Okay. So whatever blockages that you feel like, is this the end or is this just the, the, the ongoing process of whatever I was dealing with since, um, October of 2018 until now. So that is like a three, four month time frame you're going to be able to get your victory, okay? You're going to be able to slash through all of these obstacles, all of the opposition, all of the little annoyances that crept up. As Sagittarius, uh, we get really, really, um, it's not the big things that really get to us, it's the little, tiny little fires, okay? That really aggravates us because they're annoying. We are really good at handling the big things because, you know, big things can be seen from far away and we already know what we have to do. So by the time we have to tackle the big things, we are emotionally prepared. It's all the little things that creep up that takes, you know, like five, ten uh, minutes of your, your time each day, uh, a minute here, a minute there. And then before you know it, we're just like, when is this going to be over? And so I feel like some of you feel a little bit exasperated having to take care of the little things. And you're just like, why don't all those things just come together into this big thing? That way it can tackle them all at once and, you know, conserve my energy. And so I feel like this is pretty much the month where it's like no more, no more of that little stuff, no more of the time waster, and especially no more of these tiny little battles. Um, you've already conquered it. You've already, you know, shown yourself to be a force to be reckoned with. And so these little creepy, well, not creepy, these little things that creep up are going to be extinguished, you know, from, from the ground level annihilated is what i'm sensing okay i'm hearing that too annihilated so that means they don't really have another chance to creep up and bother you okay you've conquered it you've mastered it now time to move on and um like i said those roadblocks those little um i, I feel like even why am I not getting this? Why am I, I not understanding this? Why am not do, why am I not doing it well? And it's something since October and you're probably, you know, like beating yourself up over it. Is there something wrong with me? Why is everybody getting it and I'm not getting it? And it's coming in to show you that you're going to get it. Okay? It just takes some time and it requires like you looking at a situation from the inside out and I feel like nipping something in the bud or annihilating a problem or treating the, the root of the problem, treating the root of the problem so that it doesn't resurface. Okay. So it's not just putting a, a bandaid on a situation and calling it a day. It's really digging it out, digging down to the pores, to the roots, to extract something so that we can treat it at the source. Okay. Some of you might be dealing with earaches and toothaches too. Um, be careful about that. A lot of, I, I see a lot of like um, congestion in the sinus area and especially like inflammation. So I feel like you might need to take, um, there is a natural supplement out there, turmeric. So turmeric uh, pills or turmeric uh, supplements, it helps with inflammation. Okay. If you take it on a regular basis, I, I feel like it's going to give you, you know, um, a lot more relief if you're dealing with like some chronic inflammation it's going going to really help so i highly recommend it um so i feel like you know for those who are dealing with that especially if it's a health issue it's going to you're, you're going to be victorious over it okay what i'm seeing here as well we have a very powerful couple here and um i believe i forget what sign this came out for i'm not sure if it's 
if it's Leo or Virgos, I can't remember. We have a power couple, okay? Queen of Wands and the King of Wands. When two people come out in this uh, in the same suit, I usually see it as, you know, like a really big powerful couple, okay? Power couple, power couple dynamics. And um, I feel like you're dealing with somebody. Any one of these could be you, okay? Um, what I'm feeling is um, you might be dealing with another fire sign, but not necessarily. So this is a, an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And um, I feel like one per So the, the fire signs are like the most courageous and most uh, expressive signs of all the suits, okay? I feel that you yourself you're incredibly independent everyone knows that okay like you're so independent you're very daring you're always up for a good time you're always down to you know try something new and you always say yes to new opportunities okay you're dealing with someone who is uh, once upon a time very very similar to your energy very daring very courageous very much down for a good time likes to experience new things likes to travel loves to learn loves people from different culture i'm getting a very strong jupiter vibe and jupiter rules the ninth house which deals with higher education so i feel like you and this person you both could have multiple degrees under your belt or you both have traveled extensively or you both could have uh, hailed from overseas, you know, like been a transplant from one country, moving to another, living in another country that uh, far from your place of birth. So I feel like there's an element here about two people being like the perfect match for each other. And I feel like one person, this could be you or this could be them. Uh, you've gotten a little bit domesticated, so that means responsibilities, uh, child rearing possibly for those with children. Um, somebody is, is at a point where they're longing for adventure and, and for experience, but I feel like their lifestyle is disallowing them from having that kind of a carefree existence that they used to have when they were younger, okay? And I feel like for some of you, if this is a crush, somebody might have children, might have another family already, and so it's disallowing them from coming towards you. So yes, there is really, really, really strong passion and chemistry and the recognition that you both are like really perfect for one another. It's like your souls are urging each other to come together. But one person feels to me like they're bogged down with responsibilities, trying to do the right thing, trying to take care of, you know, the people in their lives, trying to stay put. And so that sense of adventure is, uh, is it's there, it's, it's looming in the back of their mind, but they're not in a position where they can act freely and carelessly and even make decisions of their own accord because, you know, their decisions affect other people that they care about. So that's what I'm seeing too. I'm also seeing as well a solidification of a major significant relationship. We have here the Ten of uh, Pentacles, and this is usually, you know, the, the long haul, okay? The engagement, the marriage, the moving in together, the escalation in the relationship, being able to live together, join up your financial resources, and be able to, I feel, grow together as a unit okay so there is a major escalation in the relationship but i'm also feeling like some of you might be in love with somebody that um that might be in another relationship even though the two of you recognize that the two of you are perfect together there is this sense of dodging there's a sense of guilt i feel associated with it and there's also the sense of like there's there's also this sense of uh like wanting the other person, but I, I feel like the energy is very unspoken. It, it's like very under the radar. It's not really talked about. It's definitely felt on an emotional level. It's felt on a spiritual and also a mental level. Like the two of you recognize that in each other, but for whatever reason, one person is not in a capacity where they can act and they can move towards you. I don't feel like it's going to, um, I, I don't feel like it's th their own decision. They want to move towards you. 
but I feel like there something is disallowing them from doing that. Okay, some unfinished business with possibly a, a, a previous relationship or a current relationship or something that's not really allowing them to come towards you. And they have to kind of work through this before they're able to do that. So I feel like some of you are just like feeling a little bit guilty about how you feel about this person. Feeling a little bit guilty that you're wanting or craving or desiring this person knowing that there are restrictions to the two of you being together. And I, I feel like that might be, you know, the, those shadows dancing across your ceiling. Uh, you want things a certain way and in the reality you're, you're not able to achieve it because you don't want to hurt another person either, okay? And when you want somebody, you want them 100%. You don't want them to give half of your t uh, their time to you, half to somebody else. You want the situation 100%. You want it in totality and you're not able to achieve that with this person. I feel like there's going to be a sense of coming around um, because you both recognize that there is marriage. There is also, um, you both recognize that the two of you are kind of like the, the, the perfect fit. I'm hearing like fit like fits like a glove okay so it's like a, a relationship partner that really complements you that fits you fits like a glove you guys are like the the two pieces of that jigsaw puzzle it's interlocked and no two pieces are alike but the two of you just fit together really really well I'm also seeing some people here um, who might be in a relationship there has been a lot of struggles there might be a silent uh, treatment there might be like a, a time off, you know, arguments that happened recently and the two of you have kind of like had a falling out with one another. One person is going to apologize, okay? This is like somebody showing up at your door, you know, very unexpectedly with like a very unexpected mer um, message. And they're delivering it in a way where their defenses are falling down, okay? So I see these pentacles, these uh, little discs falling down okay they're making promises they're making concrete promises towards you like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna try to change i'm really going to try to be a better person i'm not going to do this in the past uh, that i do in the past because i know that it pisses you off or i know that it gets on your nerves i'm gonna try to be a better person so i, I see those conversations between you and another person and i feel like it's whatever conflict has uh, brewed in the past we're dealing with the aftermath of it, okay? Everything has already been said and, and done. In the background, there's this trail of smoke, meaning the worst devastation is already over. And so now we're working together to communicate, okay? No more silent treatment. We're working to communicate and we're working to revisit situations from the past and revisit issues from the past and problems to be able to resolve them so that we're not haunted by what was not said or what was said in a harsh way we're not haunted by our demons and we're able to kind of move forward okay into a, a space where there is resolution where there is solution where there are solutions excuse me and where there is uh, breakthroughs when it comes to communication overall i have an air sign in the picture so an aquarius a gemini or a libra this is somebody that i feel uh, you don't know what to do about them. For some of you, so Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. Okay, this is someone who takes charge, who takes initiative, who is um, here today, gone tomorrow. So their energy is very exciting, okay? They're very blunt, very truthful, very honest. Very blunt, truthful, and honest. I don't know why I feel the need to repeat that. Um, but I feel like if you have been doubting this person for some of you and of course, you know If you're doubting this person if you're just like I, I wonder if they're being honest with me I wonder if they have other people in their uh, environment. I wonder if they're um, They're they're up to to no good They're very truthful faithful and honest. Okay, they're, they're just very very straightforward and I feel like you know Sagittarius you guys Appreciate that in people you appreciate people that just you know tells you the truth you appreciate people that don't hold back and I feel like this is not somebody that holds back. You might be dealing with this person where you are really, really passionate about this person. But I also feel like the way that they are, you're not 100% sure how they feel about you because this is not a warm, cuddly type of an energy. This is somebody who gets things done, who sees a solution or who sees a problem and they charge in to, to get their hands dirty and to fix the situation. They, they also fight for the underdog, so they're really, really, they, they come to everybody's rescue. 
not that you need any rescuing, but because of their energy and because of the way that they carry themselves, you're not really sure how they feel about you. And you feel like this person is not incredibly emotional, okay? I feel like they have come to your rescue many, many, many times. For some of you, I see a crush, I see a romantic partner. I'm also seeing somebody um, like either a family member, a friend, who has come to your rescue many, 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 many times. Whenever you find yourself in this space where you're just like, where do I go from here? How do I move forward? Which direction should I take? I'm in this, I, I feel very, very stuck and I don't know which way I'm supposed to go. This is a person that comes in to kind of cuts away those, um, so she's wound up, right? Like she's bound up and she's wrapped in something. And yes, she can move, but she doesn't really want to because she doesn't really know which direction she needs to go. Um, this person is coming in to kind of cut away those obstacles for you. This person comes in because they're courageous and they can show you the way to move out of a situation. They can help you unstuck yourself. Not that you need this from them, but I feel like they're giving you the insights and the clarity in order for you to proceed forward, okay? If there has been some type of a silent treatment back and forth and like lack of communication between you and this person, I feel like they're charging forward and they're really telling you, they're giving you a piece of their mind in a good way and they're telling you how they really, really feel about you. So if you've been dealing with self-doubt do they care about me are they available to me are they honest with me they're going to come in very fast and they're going to tell you um whatever it is that you need to know so you're not going to be in a quandary wondering staying up late at night uh, fantasizing and you know uh dealing with like the the self-doubt they're they're gonna let you know and i feel like they're going to be very clear about the way in which they communicate with you and I feel like you can take everything that they say at face value and you don't have to doubt their intentions, okay? They're going to make it very, very clear to you. What I have as well, somebody mulling over a situation, should I stay or should I go? Okay, um, I usually think of the Four of Swords here. This is sort of like being in a situation where we're hoping and praying for a situation to get better. For some of you, this could be with a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, or it could be with an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. You're wondering, you're wondering, is it worth more of the investment? Should I continue to put more effort and energy in this situation, or should I, you know, check myself out or move on forward with another person? I feel for some of you, um, a transition possibly from a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, to an air sign or vice versa. Um, so that, that's what's coming through. Let me talk about, let, let me just uh, move away from the relationship um, energy and try to tell you about other areas of your life because I feel like you definitely have a lot of things on your mind relationship wise, okay? You have a lot of things, a lot of um, questions regarding relationships. That's what I'm feeling. Um, and I feel like a lot of the times you know how when you're looking for your keys okay in the morning you have your coffee you have your breakfast and you're about to head to work and all of a sudden you're just like oh my gosh where did i leave my keys and you're frantically um turning the whole house upside down trying to find your keys right and um you're you're it's like the time the clock is ticking you're going to be late for work and then you're like searching everywhere you can't find your keys and then that's when we kind of like reality hits and we're just like do i take the taxi to work or do i continue looking for the keys and be late for work right it's like crunch time it's it's that decision moment what do i do and so before we start like frantically looking for our keys, we kind of need to have a little bit of a game plan, okay? So I feel Sagittarius, you're the type to, you know, frantically look for your keys, let the rock, let the clock kind of run out and then realize, you know what? I have to get a taxi because I'm not going to be able to find my keys. And uh, where I was going with this and I got a little sidetracked is uh, oftentimes when we're looking for something, and we're frantically searching for it and desperately searching for it, we never find it. 
And so it's really important for us to distract ourselves with other things, focus on other areas of our lives that needs a little bit more greasing, that needs to run a little bit smoother. So focus on those areas of our lives rather than focusing so much on the things that really keep us up at night. Okay. Doing that redirects energies. Okay. So for those of you who are believers in chi energies or even, you know, the, the, um, the energetic flow in your life, if we encounter a brick wall here and we're not getting anywhere, we're not making any progress, distract ourselves with something else. Once you're able to do that, you redirect that energy that's stuck over here. You're moving it this way and you're moving it around and you're moving it in a way where it works with you rather than against you. Does that make sense? So I feel like many of you are at a point where you have to kind of learn to do, redirect your energy, reroute your energy. I see an energy of surgeries here, health issues as well. And I feel like a lot of it can be, um, I mentioned before, you know, um, Sagittarius, you guys have really bad fevers. You, you get fevers very frequently. You get inflammations very frequently as well. And it's because you're a fire sign. And um, the thing that I want to mention as well is, you know, you, you need to take better care of your body, get a lot of water, just like, you know, on the weekends when you're just, if you're just sitting at home watching TV or doing something where you're like constantly at home, um, flood your body with a lot of water, okay? Since you're right there, the bathroom is right there, just flood your body with a lot of water. Um, go watch a movie. You're going to see this shift in your energy you're gonna feel a lot more um you know it's like all the organs are grease and lubricated and and you just you're just gonna feel this overwhelming sense of well-being okay your body really needs water i see something a little bit parched and dried like dried up and it needs to be extinguished completely with water and then i'm also seeing as well for those of you who are working against the clock, you might have some looming deadlines. You might have like um, things that you have to submit. You might have really, really, really tight timelines in which to get things done. And you're feeling frazzled and you're feeling like um, buckling under pressure and you're feeling like you, you can't, it's like hitting that brick wall, like not being able to solve something. And you're just like, why am I not being, a, why am I not able to do this? Everyone seems to be able to do it and um, things like that. Redirect that energy, okay? Looking at things from a different perspective, um, taking a little bit of a walk, distract yourself so that your guides can come in and help you problem solve, okay? What I realize um, as well is you guys do beat yourself up over things. And when something takes too long to do, okay? For a typical person, something that takes too long might be you know an hour if they've stuck at it for an hour and they can't do it they're just like okay i give up uh for you guys you have a really short attention span not that you're add but you have like a shorter tolerance level and for somebody it might take an hour for for you guys it might be like five minutes literally if you're not getting it within five minutes or if you feel like it doesn't pique your interest within five minutes you you kind of toss it aside and so what i feel is you really have to kind of sit down and have a game plan before you tackle anything okay like finding the keys um rather than turning the whole house looking for the keys we want to sit down ground ourselves and center ourselves and then ask ourselves when was the last time I used the keys? What was I wearing during that time? Is it possible that I put the keys in the pocket of whatever I was wearing? Did I have a backpack? Is it possible that it's in the backpack? Or when was the last general area vicinity that I saw the keys? And when did I use the keys and, and things like that. So retracing our steps, figuring out where we could have gone wrong and potentially taking a different route so that we don't have to reinvent the wheels. We can just kind of backtrack where the last bad situation happened rather than backtracking all the way and retracing the entire process, okay? Don't reinvent the wheels. Build upon things that you already know, okay? It saves you a lot more time. It, it, it helps with the frustration. I understand the frustration. I feel like you guys are frustrated with the situation that's not moving the way that you want and you're frustrated with your, your own capabilities. On the one hand, you put up a very, very uh, courageous, competent face, 
but behind the scenes I feel like that confidence is really lacking and um, it's like it, it, it seems to me like there are tight deadlines, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of pressure. You're making really good money, so I feel like, you know, it, it might be stressors or pressure to produce on the job, okay? And um, have, a, have a game plan, have a strategy. Come in 15 minutes before work starts to sit there and really, you know, kind of like um, write down what do I want to achieve today and not be so hard on yourself and, and give yourself, you know, the checklist, the, the um, be realistic about, you know, what your expectations are for that day. If your expectation is, I want to learn and master this one thing, just that one thing, that's okay. And that's a really good starting point. So I feel like rather than trying to accomplish everything, you want to master one thing at a time every single day. That way, by the end of the week, the work week, you might have already mastered five different things. And those five things are going to be of great help to you as you progress and, you know, set your intentions for the week after. Okay. So I feel like there are a lot of little strategies here that you can use to alleviate a situation like to make a situation better um, I'm also feeling you know whatever you feel like you're not getting you're gonna get it you're gonna come to this sense of um, mastery over things okay uh, this sense of conquest this sense of um, being able to truly understand something and I'm also seeing as well let me see let me get this message I'm gonna pull out um three cards for this death spread uh, not death spread for the death card excuse me what is this death card about okay so i'm hearing you know praying to the ancestors um ancestral spirit okay so praying, so um, being in a state of prayer. Prayers will really help a situation get better because we have here the Nine of Swords, Sleepless Night, and the Four of Swords. This is more of a peaceful sleep, restful sleep, but it's also praying, okay? The man is in a state of prayer. Um, so I feel like that's what it is, praying for another chance, praying for another opportunity to really overcome a situation. But let me still get the cards for you. Oh, perfect. Three cards perfectly. I have here the Knight of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, as well as the Queen of Cups. So first of all, I feel like you might be dealing with a, a, a person. So this could be a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Scorpio comes out very strongly. Okay. What it is uh, telling me here is uh, I feel like there's a do-over. There's a, a, a second chance. So if you have been dealing with a water sign that you've known for quite some time, um, they're saying like, don't let the, the past situation influence the future situation. In the past, they might have been like this, coming in empty handed, making promises they couldn't keep. You were really riding on that promise. You were really waiting around. And I feel like now they're coming to you sincere and straightforward and honest and with a lot more to offer. Okay, so they've learned what a valuable asset you are and they're not letting you go. And I feel like they're coming in right. And then on the other hand, I feel like there is a past situation here with a person that really had nothing to offer you and it really tainted your views of relationship. They're not financially stable. They're not very sincere with their love. And I feel like it was somebody who might be, have been opportunistic. Um, they might have been with you for other things aside from love, okay? Let's just um, leave it at that. And I feel like you're no longer falling victim to this, meaning you're not letting them back in. You're moving forward and you're focusing on your self-love. You're focusing on other relationships in your life, which is good. And then I'm also seeing as well, don't let whatever happened in the past affect your confidence, affect your lovability, okay? Um, I'm also feeling as well, many of you have accepted a, a, a job recently. 
I would say recent as in, you know, since October last year, 2018, and you're questioning whether your heart is 100% in it, it seems to me like it might have been a very stressful job where the amount of money, uh, where the amount of money that you're getting back, yes, it seems quite abundant, but the amount of effort that you're putting in, it seems like the salary should be higher. That's what it feels like to me. Some of you could also be worried about money, but I feel like you're not in a space of financial lack. Realistically, you have quite a bit of resources pull, um, piled up, and so I wouldn't worry about it too much, okay? I hope the reading is helpful for you guys, um, Sagittarius. If you're dealing with sleepless nights, um, mysterious symptoms, inflammation in particular, things popping up, and I'm, I'm seeing like a lot of things coming to the surface, skin issues, um, possibly breakouts, you need to, you know, drink a lot more water, but you also want to, I, I feel like a lot of it is nervous energy and a lot of it is just a lot of, um, it's like your body needing something and it's screaming out like, you know, cleanse me or detox me or something like that. Um, and I also would, recommend highly recommend you know coming to if you're stressed out with work okay uh coming in like 10 minutes early journal i i journal on my computer okay i write down the date i open up like a, a microsoft word i write down the date and then i i talk about what are my intentions for today what do i want to achieve today and by the end of the day i always uh, was able to achieve those things because once we put our intentions on paper it allows us to keep track in our mind and focus on our intentions. So if a situation proves to be difficult at work, then you're just like, you want to write down, you know, today I want to achieve harmony. I want to be able to tackle this one problem. I want to be able to, um, you know, finish all my work by a certain time. Setting yourself up like that every day is going to lead you to a lot of success and overcoming all of these um, blockages okay it's really going to help i highly recommend it come in you know even like 10 15 minutes early do that first before you have your morning coffee before you get your day going it's really going to help ground you and stabilize you okay um i wish you the best sagittarius for those of you who are interested in a private reading um, I've included a link in the description box below, a uh, psychic in California, her name is Bridget. She is phenomenal, I highly recommend her. Um, if you'd like to book a reading for yourself, if you're dealing with some things and you need some spiritual guidance, um, I'm no longer doing private readings, so, but I highly recommend uh, Bridget. She's been really amazing uh, the few times that I have uh, seen her last year and also the year before that. So I've known her for about two years now. I've used her services. I've recommended friends and families and they've been really happy with her. So they've been very satisfied with their readings with her. So I highly recommend her for you if you are in need of spiritual guidance, okay? Take care of yourself and take it easy. I will talk to you soon.